G'day guys, I wanted to do a little video today just to tell you how I've made my lund stool. Lund stools are absolutely amazing and still in use today, thousands of years after they were invented. How awesome is that? So let's take a look at how to make a lund stool. That's coming up. Alrighty guys, so the stuff we're going to need for this project is your basic personal protective equipment, eye protection, ear protection, some kind of mask, it's always a good idea. You're going to need some marking implements, you're going to need a straight edge and an angle, you're going to need something to do your corners with, and you're going to need something to do measuring with, and you're also going to want a plan. Alrighty, now I'm going to talk through my... Um, angles and radiuses and measurements as we go through uh, however just for right now we're going to get cutting now just for those of you who are interested this is um, standard radiata pine it is 38 millimeters thick which is just under an inch and a half and about 180 millimeters wide which is approximately I think that's six and a half seven inches there you go, just seven, seven and about a third of an inch. Um, I'm not really much of one for working in Imperial. I've always worked in metric. So, so there we go. Alrighty guys, let's, uh, let's start measuring up and we'll work our way through this. This is a very easy project to do. Uh, you don't need uh, anything too fancy. You can use hand, to uh, you can use hand tools. Uh, I'm gonna use power tools in this particular one uh, just because I'm a little bit um, time poor today. I've got a few things on. So, so let's get to it. Alrighty. Um, now I'm just going to use a simple white glue. Uh, I use a glue called Sikaflex, which is suitable for interior and out to exterior use. Right, now I'm just going to work out my corners. So the measurements that we're working on, oops, uh, is 40 centimeters for the length and 25 centimeters for the width. Now I need to have the three-legged stool, the three-legged stool. We'll get to the legs in a minute. However, in the meantime, I'm just going to put my uh, my corners on. Now, for ease for ease of use in in this kind of scenario, what I'm going to do is just use some basic household items to give me my radiuses. Now, the first one I'm going to use uh, is a just the top of a little plastic container the kids use for their lunches. That'll give me. That's approximately four centimeters of a radius. Let's see. Well, oh, not quite. About three and a quarter centimeter radius there. Same on the other side, of course. 
Now I'm going to use uh, just a food tin here. This is going to give me a radius of five centimeters, which is more than enough. So this is basing it off the Lund type stool. I say type because I don't believe there were too many found that were even that similar, let alone even really alike. Okay, now the first two legs that I'm going to put in are going to be positioning at five centimeters in now I just need to find a halfway point here which is 20 all right that's marked now I'm going to leave that a couple of hours to dry it is a reasonably warm day here in Brisbane Australia and then we'll come back and, and put the holes through. Uh, Rightio, now we're going to cut the legs. We're cutting uh, using this simple piece of dowel. This is um, pine as well, and we're cutting at 40 centimeters. I realize some people might think 40 centimeters is a bit, is a bit um, low. These were designed as uh, milking stools, pretty much, so that's uh, the height I'm going to go with. Let's, uh, let's get a few of these cut out. Right, the glue's all dried, everything's going really well. We're now going to round off the corners and we're going to put in the holes for the legs. Right, let's see how we go. going to go over with a router just to smooth off the edges. The way to affix the legs on a stool such as this, cut a small, slip down the, uh, the leg. Now what you want to do is going to create a wedge to go inside there. We're going to apply some linseed oil. Not only is that going to provide lubrication as we insert that, the linseed oil will cause the wood to swell so we'll have a nice firm joint. And as we glue the wood together, once we put that wedge in place, it's going to create a heap of um, tension and the leg's simply not going to go anywhere. Just be a little bit careful with linseed oil. It has been known to spontaneously combust. So keep your rags and stuff out of the sunlight. Uh, you don't want to end up in trouble. Still a bit loose, a bit looser than I was expecting. Not a massive deal. It's not going to go anywhere. My glue of choice is called Sikaflex. It's a fantastic glue, it's suitable for interior and exterior use. I 
rodeo. I'm now going to leave the glue to dry for an hour or so, a couple of hours. Give it a good sand and then give it a good coat in uh, linseed oil and it'll be good to go. The secret of the lun stool is, is quite amazing and I love the way this works. Let's just take a quick look. How awesome is this? Really love it. The secret to the lun stool is that you can tie yourself to the stool. Now this isn't some weird thing I've come up with. They've been doing this for thousands of years. And the reason you do this is because you can take the stool with you. And it's amazingly useful to do this when you're milking cows. I'm actually, hopefully in about the next 12 months, I'm gonna be getting my first of a small herd of um, medieval type cows. I'm gonna be testing out this chair then. In the meantime, this is an amazing little piece of kit to have around any kind of medieval campsite, even workshops. It's just fantastic to have. You can use it as a stool. It's a great place to sit. And this is historically accurate to the early medieval period. Righto guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.